it's I, I find it extraordinary how on the internet and on YouTube people itch for slogans, simple slogans, and they don't listen to the rest of the piece or they just look at the title and they assume they know exactly what you're going to say. So what's the point of making a YouTube video if nobody's actually going to listen to it? Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I will continue doing so because I think if, if the only person who listens to it is me, and I probably won't, I, but the process of articulating thought, trying to pin down what is the issue, is something that is useful and something we should all be engaged in. If somebody listens, that's great. If somebody doesn't listen, that's fine. But if somebody only looks at the title and assumes they know where the where the um, thought is going to go, well, they're... <laughs> They're on a, they're on a hiding for chaos. Um, Just Hannah says, uh, but why would you conflate being against innocent Palestinians being wiped out with being anti-Israel or anti-Jewish? Well, I don't, I don't. That's the point. I'm actually, I'm actually very much against innocent Palestinians being wiped out. Uh, but at the same time, I am also very firmly against being uh, anti-Israel and against being anti-Jewish. I, I don't see any problem with putting all those three things together. I am, however, very specifically anti-Netanyahu. And I'm anti-Naftali uh, Bennett and, uh, and other prime ministers who've led governments, very right-wing governments, in Israel since the turn of the century. If you go back to 1896, to Theodore Herzl, Herzl suggested that Zionism was a solution, a remedy to anti-Semitism. And uh, what he was thinking of was a secular Jewish state, a liberal utopia, um, of a, a liberal utopia of, of prosperity, uh, not, not, not just isolation, not just uh, a, a unique brand of a secular Jewish state, but uh, in, but indeed, since 1948, the state of Israel has been a state of prosperity in the Middle East, a last refuge also for Jews flee fleeing persecution in a nasty world, and Jews are still fleeing persecution, and Israel should be there to welcome people. But Netanyahu has pursued his own understanding his own uh, remit uh, so that anti-Semitism anti -Semitism is redefined as opposition to his policies and to be Jewish is redefined as being his supporter. And both those ideas are absolutely wrong. Anti-Semitic is a term, is a German hate term coined in 1879 to target Jews. So even if the Lexus, even if the uh, etymology of this word suggests that the term should embrace both Arabs and Jews, uh, Arabic is similarly, after all, a Semitic language like Hebrew, that is not the original intent. And this was a term of prejudice that has been rehabilitated and used to describe anti-Jewish prejudice. Um, and the creation, for example, of lurid conspiracy theories, fanaticism of hate. But anti-Semitism is also a misnomer that assumes all Jews are the same, and today that all Jews are indistinguishable from or indistinguishable with all Israelis or rather that all Israelis support the policies of Netanyahu. Were you not uh, a witness to the huge marches against Netanyahu's uh, changes to the judicial system just a month or so ago? In its ultimate genocidal form, anti-Semitism is the Holocaust, and indeed the terrorist attack uh, that Hamas caused on October the 7th, the attack intended to hurt civilians. Now, it's true. It's true that a Jesuitical casuist nod to warning civilians of an imminent 
missile strike suggests a care for international law and a care for civilians by the Israeli state. But that is a salute to deceit because it is undermined by Netanyahu's siege, by Netanyahu's rhetoric, by Netanyahu's manner. Now, I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that the Israeli um, soul is not a terrorist soul. But I am also sure that Netanyahu is leading Israel down, a, down an avenue of disaster and is, has squandered goodwill in a way that I have not seen in my entire life before. He has squandered the goodwill of the world community. He has savaged peace, not engaged with it, just as Viktor Orban um, has, uh, ha has, has inflated uh, enmity. He sees em enemies in liberals and Muslims, or GB News discredits uh, all dissent as woke. We have, we, we have uh, chanced upon a world controlled by ideology, by rhetoric, by slogans, by belief that is not discussion, that is not intellectually sound, that is not, um, that, that is not even, I think, rational. Uh, and the, 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 the best image that I can think of for this is that we have found ourselves in a cult, in a cult, uh, as surely as we might have found ourselves in one of these extreme cults uh, that, 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 that we've seen emerging in America over the years. This is a cult. It's the cult of Netanyahu, and it subverts reality. And it's that reason that I, I make such a plea for proper religious education, because the the lure of the cult is as much a part of a good <clears throat> religious education as a knowledge of the great faiths of the world. And a modern understanding of religion is an understanding that recognizes the power of the cult, the power of those people who say we are right. I triumphantly, I hope, I, 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 I would like to make a, a beacon, an icon of indecision, of uncertainty, of not knowing, of agnosticism, literally agnosticism. To be a Gnostic is to be in possession of the knowledge. I'm not in possession of the knowledge. There is no knowledge. I live my life and I hope the... The, 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 these short videos are a testimony to a lack of knowledge, to uncertainty, to ignorance, to an openness for discussion. Not a trading of slogans from one side and the other, but a willingness to listen. And I don't think that Mr Netanyahu wants to listen. And yesterday... Uh, Naftali Bennett said very clearly that he didn't want to listen to the rest of the world. They've been listening to the rest of the world, and that's got them in the mess. No, it's completely false. That's a false reading of history. What's got Israel, what's got the Israeli government in a mess is the settlers, the absurdity of the settlers, and the craziness of a right-wing ideology and this obsession with building a wall or um, stopping immigration, letting them in. And we've got the same language going on in the UK. I'm not surprised that Priti Patel had dealings with Israel. I'm not surprised at all. Why should you not have dealings with Israel as well? But subversive dealings with Israel, yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised, because it's the same mindset. 
It's not about making a better life for us. It's not about making a better life for Israel. It's about control. And it's about suppression. The suppression of freedom control by the government. Now, is GB News now going to turn around and say, oh, he's so woke, oh, he's so liberal, oh, he's so such a, such a moaning lefty? I don't believe I am any of those things. I simply want a healthy discussion. And that healthy discussion should have been going on for years. Instead, it's been suppressed by slogans and control and censorship. We've seen that in Israel. We're seeing it developing here in the UK. It leads, it leads to conflict. It leads to disaster. I, I hope, I hope Israel can be pulled back from the brink of disaster. I hope to God that Israel can be persuaded to modify its position. And I hope that uh, Hezbollah is not uh, is is not pulled into this through the needling of Iran, another country that is more intent on sloganizing than on freedom and discussion. Uh, and indeed, over the whole lot of this is the is a maniacal puppetry of Putin. There's a bit of alliteration. <laughs>